What's the best way to measure your heart and lung fitness using just one number? I would argue that it is your VO2 max or your maximal oxygen uptake during exercise. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley and today I will talk about what your relative VO2 max is and why it's important. Your relative VO2 max tells you how much oxygen your muscles are able to use per minute to make your body move. As you run for a longer period of time, your muscles require more oxygen to make energy to power movement. It's fairly intuitive. Uh, v stands for volume and O2 is oxygen. The number generated from the equation is expressed in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. In some ways, your VO2 max is like the horsepower of a car's engine. The higher your VO2 max is, the more oxygen or fuel you're able to use while exercising. If you have a higher VO2 max, you'll be able to exercise at a higher intensity and for a longer period of time before fatiguing. So what's the big picture? Your muscles need oxygen to make your body move. You inhale oxygen and it travels through your lungs to small air sacs called alveoli. Here oxygen moves out of the lungs and into tiny blood vessels. The red blood cells moving through these capillaries are stuffed with hemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen molecules. So oxygen is then transported to the rest of the body via its hemoglobin carrier, like a, almost like a taxi cab, so to speak. When the red blood cells reach muscle, the oxygen detaches from the hemoglobin and exits the blood vessel. It then passes into the muscle cell where it either attaches to a storage protein called myoglobin or passes into one of the many power generators of the muscle cell known as mitochondria. Inside the mitochondrion, each oxygen molecule accepts electrons at the end of the electron transport chain, which allows your body to make ATP or adenosine triphosphate. A molecule of, aden of ATP is a packet of energy that can be stored and used by your body later. In short, Muscle cells need oxygen to produce energy to power muscle contraction. So what are the factors that determine how much oxygen your body is able to use during exercise? VO2 max is a product of your maximal cardiac output multiplied by the amount of oxygen your muscle cells are able to extract from your arterial blood. And this is known as the arterial venous oxygen difference. The amount of oxygen your muscles are able to use per minute during exercise is really dependent on two main factors. The volume of blood being pumped out of your heart to the muscle and also by the efficiency of your muscle cells in extracting the oxygen from the blood and then using it to make fuel. Your maximal cardiac output is determined by the number of times that your heart beats per minute or your heart rate multiplied by the volume of blood that is pumped out of your heart each time it beats and this is called your stroke volume. A heart that is able to fill with a larger volume of oxygenated blood before pumping it out to the rest of the body will be able to deliver more oxygen to the muscle. Likewise, a heart that is able to pump at a faster rate will also be more efficient in delivering oxygen to the body. In fact, the progressive decline in VO2 max after the age of 30 is primarily due to a drop in your maximal cardiac output. Much of that decline is actually due to this inevitable decrease in your maximal heart rate with aging that pretty much occurs in all adults, whether they're fit or sedentary. So 
we can see that muscles that are able to use more oxygen at a faster rate can produce more energy for movement. So what are some typical relative VO2 max levels? In a sedentary older person, it may be 35 milliliters per kilogram per minute. And in a, younger, in a sedentary younger person, maybe 45 milliliters per kilogram per minute. If you can run a mile in about six minutes and 30 seconds, you probably have a VO2 max value of about 50 milliliters per kilogram per minute. If you can run a mile in four minutes and 50 seconds, you probably have a VO2 max value closer to 70 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Relative VO2 max levels in sick adults are considerably lower. In patients or anybody with severe lung disease, you might have a VO2 max level of 13 milliliters per kilogram per minute. One study showed that the, your risk of death actually increased by four and a half fold if your VO2 max level went below 17.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute. This is considered the frailty threshold, and most people with a VO2 max below this level are not able to live independently. If I were to choose one number that would give me the most accurate picture of how well my heart and lungs are working, it would be my relative VO2 max level. If we could measure VO2 max as easily as we do blood pressure and heart rate, it would probably be routinely checked as a vital sign during a doctor's visit. Next, I'll talk about how your VO2 max peaks between age 20 and age 30, and then drops by about 10% every decade of life after age 30. We'll see how critically important it is to achieve your highest lifetime VO2 max in your 20s, as it will greatly affect the quality of your life later. Thank you for listening. I hope that this is helpful for you.